Okay. Hey guys, good evening. Thank you very much for joining today. Let me just double check very quickly here if I can share my screen. Just give me a moment. Let me see. I'm going to share the second screen. There we go. <laughs> Okay, guys, so welcome to your session number 16. So congratulations. We're just um, having our session today and you will be completing your uh, pre-advanced three level, right? So meaning that you're moving to the advanced level. Obviously, right, this is just the beginning of your journey and you have to continue practicing and learning and um searching, you know, for more options for you to practice your English. So, well, today is February the 9th, right? And we are going to be working in section 16. Pretty much what we do during the last session is to check very quickly the exam and the structure of the exam will allow us to have a review, right, of the topics that we have been um, working on. So that's what we are planning to do today. So let's move on and let's go straight to business. So it's 801. So what we are doing is that we're going to begin with the attendance. Okay, so let's begin. Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Present. Thank you. Eh, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. Thank you. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present. Thank you so much. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Carlos Present. Antonio. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Okay, Diego, thank you. Y Claudia Marcela también, thank you so much. Give me a second. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Jenny Lisette Campos Martinez. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Thank you, Jose Carlos. Eh, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Maria Susena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Marta Estela. Marta Ruth Enriquez Reyes. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Méndez Albeño. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rebecca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo. Present. Ok, thank you, Rodrigo Antonio. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you so much. Jensi Marlene Leon Lopez. And Zulma Beatriz Perez Galdames. Okay, guys, thank Present. you. Present. Ahí está. Thank you, Zulma. Very good. So I'm going to add your attendance right now. And thank you, everyone, for being here. So let's begin. As I was saying before, today is the class where we use the final exam as a guide to have a quick review of the topics that we have studied, right? So that's what I'm planning to do right now. Last During the last session, we were able to complete the, um, I would say, 
the explanation and some practice, you know, of, of the topics that we studied during that section, right? But still, I have other exercises that probably we didn't complete at that time, but it would be better to go ahead and uh, do it, right? Uh, if uh, si, Nady Bismen de Salveño. Sí, sí, la, la mencioné, pero no se preocupe que ahorita le pongo yo la asistencia. Nady, quizás no se había conectado en ese momento. Ahorita la agrego. Eh, yo igual. ¿Quién no? ¿Quién no? ¿Quién? Perdón, Marta Estela. Ah, también. Sí. Vaya Marta Estela, ahorita la agregamos. Ahí está. ¿Ok? Y si no, no worries, que vuelvo a pasar la lista. Recuerden que sus minutos quedan grabados en, en un archivo. Que, se, que, que pues inglés corporativo maneja, así que no worries, pero ahí quedan grabados sus minutos de conexión. Así que thank you so much, guys, and let me move to the final exam. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. There we go. Bye. Entonces, let's take a look at the exam. Um, the first thing that we did, right, was to complete you know, some sentences, right? It says, listen to the conversation, check, right, the correct answers, okay? So you have to listen, right, to um, the conversations that we have there and we have, you know, to answer. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Give me a moment. I know that some of you, I mean, most of you have already finished and you have completed, but this is a requirement, right, for us to finish this course. So let's listen and then we're going to answer. Three. Hey, Erica, I hear you're studying filmmaking. Yeah, it's what I've always wanted to do. So what has to happen to make a movie? First, the director divides the script into scenes. Oh. Why is that? Well, the scenes may not be shot in the order they appear in the script. Different scenes may have to be done at different locations or at certain times, you know? So the director is someone who is very organized. Absolutely. Anyway, many different shots are taken, and the director chooses the best takes. So how is the final version made? Well, the takes are put together by the director and the editor. Then music, sound effects, and any computer graphics are added. And there's your movie. Four. Share. So I'm going to stop it here, right? So what about this one? The final version of a movie isn't in order, doesn't have sound effects, or is put together by editor and director. What do you think? It's put together by the editor and director. Okay, very good, excellent, right? It's put together by the editor and director. Now here, guys, what we are trying to put into practice is a little bit of passive voice, right? So it's put together, present simple, and we're using the, the, um, the passive voice. Let me open here my little whiteboard. <laughs> so remember that whenever we're talking about passive, right we are using two elements so we are including two elements that's going to be the verb be right verb be plus the past participle of the verb as far as far of the verb okay so whenever we need to uh, use it that way remember the object of the active becomes the subject of the passive right so the final version of a movie is put together by the editor and director very good let's continue listening four cheryl these are great photos what's your secret well i studied photography in school after that, I was a photojournalist at a magazine for three years. But look at these landscape shots. Is landscape photography something that requires special skills? Yes. Pictures of landscapes have to be taken with great care. You need to make sure that as much of your scene as possible is in focus. What about weather? Well, most people think the best pictures are taken on a sunny day, 
But that isn't always true. An overcast rainy day or a snowy day could offer you better opportunities to take interesting pictures. Taking a picture in bad weather requires a bit of a risk, I imagine. But the results are worth it. These are really incredible, Cheryl. Okay, very good. So Cheryl says a good landscape photographer has to understand journalism, how the weather can affect the photo, or how to make a landscape look in focus. What do you think? How weather can affect a photo? Exactly right. How weather can affect a photo. Very good. Now, what about the next one? Let's go ahead and listen. One. Hey, Ray, that was quite a party last night. Yeah, it was fun. I'm still cleaning up, though. What are you doing with all the bottles and cans? I'll take the cans to the recycling center and throw away the bottles. Oh, no, you should take the bottles, too. Nah, I don't get any money for recycling glass. No, but I think everyone should be required to recycle glass anyway. It's a waste to throw it away. Yeah, but recycling centers should be required to pay people who return cans and bottles. Then they won't throw them away. Two. Okay, so as you could listen, right, we were... Um, dealing with a conversation that includes models right so they are talking about should be required right or shouldn't be required etc so here is when we give suggestions right and whenever we think something is necessary right or whenever we consider something is a good idea okay so ray doesn't recycle glass because glass is too expensive to recycle he doesn't get any money or the recycle center only accepts cans what is the right answer the recycling center only accepts cans mm -hmm. let's see do you all agree let's listen to the conversation one more time listen again one hey ray that was quite a party last night yeah it was fun i'm still cleaning up though what are you doing with all the bottles and cans i'll take the cans to the recycling center and throw away the bottles oh no you should take the bottles too nah i don't get any money for recycling glass no but i think everyone should be required to recycle glass anyway it's a waste to throw it away yeah but recycling centers should be required to pay people who return cans and bottles then they won't throw them away two okay so now i ask again ray doesn't recycle glass because he doesn't get any money correct right Unfortunately, he doesn't get any money. But as the girl is saying, you should be required to right, recycle. Everyone should be required to recycle even glass, even though you don't get paid for that, right? Good job, excellent. So thank you so much. Oh, okay, Ceci, no, don't worry. Welcome to the class and I'm going to add your attendance right now, okay? Give me a second, Ceci. Okay, I have included it here. Thank you so much and welcome. Okay, so what about the second one? Let's listen to the second one. Two. Hey, Danielle, I saw you biking to work yesterday. Oh, yeah. When my car died, I decided to buy a bike. I figured I could do something about the traffic downtown and get some exercise at the same time. But there are very few bike lanes, aren't there? And in any case, cars use them. I know. Drivers who do that should be fined. A hundred dollars at least. It's so dangerous. Cyclists don't always behave so well either. I've seen them ride side by side and not allow cars to pass. Yeah, and I've seen cyclists without helmets too. Yeah, cyclists should be required to wear helmets. And if they don't, they should be fined a hundred dollars. Okay, so what do you think? 
Danielle bought a buy because she wants to reduce traffic, because she had to pay a fine, or because she rides side by side? What do you think it's the right answer? Wants to reduce traffic. Wants to reduce traffic. Okay, very good. Now let's listen again so we can get the idea. Remember that they are using models. They are giving suggestions, right? I always forget that when you want to listen to it again, it gives you trouble. One. Lisa. Hey. They won't throw them away. Two. Hey, Danielle. I saw you biking to work yesterday. Oh, yeah. When my car died, I decided to buy a bike. I figured I could do something about the traffic downtown and get some exercise at the same time. But. So there you go, right? She figured out that she could do something she says about the traffic and exercise at the same time. So that is the correct answer. So we're going to um, click on send and we got all our right answers, okay? So what are the two topics that were included here? Two topics, number one, passive voice, okay? And number two, uh, the um, should, um, should be required, mustn't be required, et cetera, right? So those were the, the um, given opinion options that we have, right? Now let's move on to the second one. Well, I think this is what happened. What did I do? Okay. I think I went back by mistake. Okay, so this is the listening section. Right, the one that we just um, worked on. Now we have the reading A, D, right? And then B, what happened there? <laughs> okay, there's a reading, right? And it says instructions, read the article, then checked the correct answer. So here you have four different questions, okay? Now, a piece of advice, guys. If you are going to read an article and if you are given the questions first, Please read the questions first. Uh, the same with the listening. Okay, whenever we're working with the listening and if we are given the questions first, you should scan them. Why? Because when you do that first, you have an idea of what you're looking for. For example here, right? Uh, it says a good title for the article would be animated movies are just for kids. Animated movies result in ticket sales and awards, and big name movies stars a boy animated movies. Two, render. Paragraph two means translate from, from raw to final form, bring a fact to your mind that you knew before, or have an opinion. Hmm. Paragraph two, cast. Paragraph three means speak clearly, choose actors for parts, throw something into the air. And number four, animated movies have had a positive, a negative, or no effect on the movie industry. Now that you have read all the questions or all the details that you need to focus on, let's go ahead and read the article. Let's see, can I have some volunteers to help me reading? Oh, let me see if I can do this a little bit bigger. Um, I think it's better. Marta, thank you so much. I'm going to um, select the three different. This is the first paragraph. Okay. So can you help me read in the first one? No vayan, a, no vayan a bajar la manito because I can see your names. Okay. So Marta, Ruth, can you begin with the first one? Okay. Animated movies aren't just for kids anymore. Some of the most popular movies of 20. 2010 were Toy Story 3, How to Train Your Dragon, and Despicable Me. In fact, Pixar's Toy Story 3 became the highest grossing animated movie ever made. Animated movies are fast become, becoming an important force in the movie industry. Good job. Thank you so much, Marta Bruce. Now let's continue with uh, Jose Francisco Peña, I think it's okay. That's going to be the second one. 
until here, hasta acá. Okay, so. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It, it ends here, right? Aquí termina, sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Jose Francisco Peña. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Wait. <laughs> sorry. There you go. No, mm -hmm. no worries. Mm -hmm. Making animated movies can take much longer than making traditional movies. This is partially because approximately seven hours are needed to render one single frame of an animated movie. In fact, some frames can take up to 39 hours to render. Toy Story 3 took 1,084 days or nearly three years to make. That's right. Thank you so much. Okay. Now let's continue with you, Claudia Marcela. And this one it starts from most animated movies and ends over here. Okay. So let's begin. Most animated movies have big name stars attached to them. To voice characters, some have voiced the character of Woody in the Toy Story movies, while Angelina Jolie was cut as the voice of three girls in Kung Fu Panda using famous actors to voice. Animated characters is meant to turn adults into going to animated movies with their children. The studio executives know, know that the bigger the name, the movie likely adults will chat along with their kids. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Rafael, can you please help me with the last paragraph? To, to further in, emphasize the impact anime movies have had on the movie industry, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and in Science began giving out Academy Awards for Best Anime Features in 2001. Mm -hmm. The the prestige of winning such an important award results in more ticket sales for movie theaters and more profits for anime movie makers. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. And well, you did a very good job, guys, with the pronunciation. I would say probably the words uh, popular, right? Popular popular then I think it was approximately approximately um characters right characters famous it's not famous it's famous right famous um let me see someone just thought there creía que ayer terminó oh el you <laughs> No, I said yesterday that today we're going to have our last class, right? Um, let's see, executives, right? Executives, more likely. What is the meaning of more likely? It's possible, right? It's possible that adults will tag along. So adults, adults, right? Um, I think we're doing good, Academia Awards. Prestige, right? The prestige of winning. Um, theaters, theaters, and I think that was it. Excellent. So thank you very much. Now, guys, over here, right, we are able to um, see like the use and the vocabulary, right, of the lesson and then including some um jobs and vocabulary related to movies, right? So that's what we started here. Now let's go back to our, wait, you erase all my drawings. Let's go back to our um, questions. So a good title for the article would be, oh, that would be attached, right? Attached. I think I have here, Ruth, I mean, Mart yeah, Mart Ruth, let me check something. Creo que aquí guardé the explanation of the um, of the simple past pronunciation. Where did I leave it? It's not this one. No. Uh, 
I can't find it, but do you remember, guys, that I was explaining that whenever we have some ending sounds, right, in the in the um, um, ed form or the past participle or past of some verbs, right, we need to make sure that we are using the um, the right pronunciation, right? So, ed pronunciation for the sh sound, right, uh, in that case is voiceless if I'm not mistaken, right? Let me check over here my notes. Yeah, it's voiceless. So that's gonna be with T sound, T, attached, attached with T sound at the end. Mm -hmm. I don't mm, know if okay. I answer your question. Uh -huh. Yes, teacher, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Claudia Marcela, do you have a question? I'm sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. So let me see. The the first one, right? A good a good title for the article would be. What do you think it's the, the best uh, title for the article, guys? Anyone? What would be the best title after reading? You can see it here, you know, to further emphasize, and this is another tip. No question, this is Claudia. Okay, no, no problem. Whenever, guys, we read an article, cuando nosotros leemos un artículo, el, el, en la primera parte, the first paragraph, it is going to include the main idea, okay? Y luego cuando yo tengo, pues, los siguientes párrafos son los que incluyen las, se llaman supporting sentences. Vamos a ponerlo aquí en mi, en mi pizarrita. Bueno, tenemos acá. Um, that's going to be number one. Let me see. The article, it's going to have the first paragraph. Okay, the first paragraph is going to contain the main idea, okay? And then the rest will be supporting, oops, supporting um, sentences included, included in the supporting paragraphs. Como así, teacher? Um, think about it as a hamburger. It's como una hamburger, right? So we got the, um, the main idea that is included in the first paragraph, then we have the, the, the other elements, right? That are like those, that tomato, that lettuce, cheese, the patty that we need. And we have the concluding sentence, right? Or the concluding paragraphs. So for me to be able to identify what this article is about, so what I have to do is to check the first one. Okay, let's see, what was the writer, you know, uh, presenting at the very beginning? It says, y aquí estoy dando tips, ¿ok? Para cómo identificar esas ideas principales. So, it says, animated movies aren't just for kids anymore. Some of the most popular movies of 2010 were Toy Story, How to Trade a Dragon, and Despicable Me. In fact, Pixar's Toy Story 3 became the highest grossing animated movie ever made. Animated movies are fast becoming an important force in the movie industry. Now, how, do they, how, do, how does the writer close the idea? Como cierra el, el, el artículo. To further emphasize the impact animated movies have had on the movie industry, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences began giving out Academy Awards for Best Animated Features in 2001. That prestige of winning such an important award results in more tickets sales for a movie, theaters, and more profits for animated movie makers. So as it says here, animated movies are fast becoming an important force in the movie industry. So after saying that, what would be a good title for the article? Animated movies for selling tickets lost in a war. Okay, very good. Animated movies result in ticket sales and awards. Very good. Okay, what about this one? What is what does render mean? Uh, 
-hmm. Translate from row to final form. Okay, translate from row to final form. Okay, that's correct. That's render. Transform or translate from row. Row means crudo o así como como que fuera un draft, pongámoslo así. ¿verdad? And then final form, that would be the, um, the movie itself. Give me a second. Vamos a contestarle a, a Eliu. Ahí está, ya vino Eliu. Are you here, Eliu? No, todavía no se conecta. Ok. Bueno. Very good. Yeah, remember that. Okay. Ahí está. I'm sorry, Ahí está. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought that yesterday we had them finish it, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we here. finished today. Excellent, ok. <laughs> No, but I could see I could see that your attendance was very good. So um, the fact that you missed half an hour just today won't affect you in you know in a negative way. Uh, that's a good thing whenever you are in all the classes and you connect from the beginning until the end, because in the case you know you have an emergency or something happens like today you had um, you didn't know right that we ended the, I mean that we were going to finish the classes today. So that won't affect you because it's only today, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, yesterday I said that today we were going to, to finish. Okay, so what about number three, cast? Cast paragraph three means speak clearly, choose actors for parts or throw something into the air. What do you think? Choose actor for parts? Correct, right? So I don't know if you have seen those like, um, I think they are interviews where you have the cast of the movie, right? So the cast of the movie means that group of actors that were working together to uh, make this movie. And then they are presented, uh, you know, in in a show or they offer different, I mean, interviews for different, you know, um, uh, I would say shows or talk shows, et cetera. And uh, you have the chance to listen, you know, from them, right? The Their experiences, you know, by uh, through the film or through making the film, right? What about number four? Animated movies have had a positive, a negative, or no effect on the movie industry. Positive. 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 Exactly. It's been a positive uh, effect on the movie industry. Actually, it's so positive that it includes a lot of money, right? So as you can see here, right, yeah, apparently they were able to discover that animated movies were selling a lot, right? And this story about Toy Story, by the way, it's very interesting. Actually, it took like three years, right? in rendering, you know, all the um, scenes and, you know, parts of the movie. Actually, the movie, it's very good. I mean, I like it. I love it. And by then, you know, filming that uh, or making that movie, animated movie, I think it's from the 90s, right? Wow. I think it's a masterpiece, right? I mean, with the technology that we had at that time, obviously. So thank you so much for that. And let's continue with the next one. Oh, let's see if we're going to send our answers. And as you can see, we got our 24, 25 points because they are correct. Now, write the words. That was uh, one to the third section, right? The third section. So it says instructions. Anita accidentally deleted an important file. So her boss once wasn't prepared for an important meeting. Read the sentences and choose from the words below the one that best defines it. Just type in the word, no capital letter or period, it's necessary, right? When that happens, what I recommend is to copy and paste, right? So if you think this is the answer, so you copy and paste it, right? So guys, who wants to help me with the first one? Read it and give me the answer, please. Suhesh. 
Okay, can you read the full sentence? No sé quién habló, perdón, fue tan rápido que no, no vi quién dijo la... la... Ajá. No, no sé quién fue, lo siento, lo voy a leer yo porque no escuché. You should keep track of your computer files, right? You should keep track of your computer files. So in this case, it's a suggestion, right? Okay, why? Because you can see, aquí veo la estructura, should, right? You should keep track of your computer files. So I'm given a suggestion, I'm given a piece of advice, okay? Who wants to help me with number two? Thank you, Jose Francisco. If you do it again, you lost your job. A warning. Okay, very good. Right? So if you do it again, you lose your job. That's a warning, right? También les llamamos warning whenever we are with um whenever we're working. And they give you, I think in Spanish, they are called APES, una acción de personal. So in English, also they call them warnings, right? Y las llaman, les llaman, quiero, creo que son verbal warning, a written warning, and the final warning, right? So they give you three opportunities. If you get until the end, so unfortunately, your contract is terminated, right? And you are fired from the company. Very good. Number three, who wants to help me with number three? Me? Yes, Dina, go ahead. Okay. You're so responsible. You you lose everything. I think it's a criticism. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. Good job, okay. Yes, right. So in this case, the person says, you're so irresponsible. You lose everything, which I think it's, you know, very very rude, right? We shouldn't talk to someone like that, especially if the person has lost something, you know. Creo que lo peor que uno puede hacer en ese momento es como criticar, ¿verdad? Probably the best thing to do would be to be a little bit more empathetic. Oh, I'm sorry that you lost your keys, right? Don't worry, we will find it. But next time, just try to put them in the same place so you won't lose, you know, your keys. We have to be understandable, right? No ir directo como, ¿por qué las perdiste? Era irresponsable. No, right? Because that would make you feel even worse. Eso lo hace sentir a uno peor todavía, ¿verdad? Chico, ya con haber perdido lo que ha perdido, más el cri la, la crítica, so it's even worse. Okay, now let's go with number four. Number four, who wants to help me? Hey, teacher. Oh, Jenny, dígame. It wasn't your fault. Someone else delete the files. It's an excuse. Okay, very good. It's an excuse, right? So let's see. It wasn't your fault. Someone else deleted the file, okay? Now, probably here, um, the word excuse is, boy, uh, Marta Ruth, it's working in a, in a different way. It's like, uh, um, es como perdonar también, because excuse, also es que en español una excusa, pero en este caso el verbo está funcionando de una forma diferente, right? So it's like um, probably you are, uh, how can I say this? You are not blaming the person, o sea, no la estamos culpando. You are not blaming the person. We are, you know, doing the opposite, right? Uh, Marta Ruth, can you help me with number five? Yes, for me, number five is a prediction. Ah, okay, very good. Can you read the sentence? You'll probably you'll probably probably find the file in the trash on on your computer. That's a prediction. Very good. Excellent. Why do I know that it's a prediction? Well, because I can see the uh, future simple. So I see you will. And then the word probably, right, meaning that there's a prediction that something might happen and the verb, right? So you'll probably find the file in the trash on your computer. Good job. So instructions, complete the paragraph, use the passive of the verbs given, 
just type in the verb, okay? So now we're going to put into practice, you know, the passive voice. But remember that in this case, we're using verb B plus the past participle, okay? So do I have a volunteer to help me with the first one? Can you read it and give me the answer, please? Me, teacher. Go ahead. To prepare for a TV talk show, research has to be done to find interesting guests such as movie star and actors. Okay, can you repeat the answer one more time? Has to be done. Very good. Be done. Okay, excellent. What about number two? Volunteer for number two. Thank you, Jenny. Volunteer for number two. Me. Go ahead, Ceci. Okay. Next, the selected people must be ranked um, in the order of preference. Mm -hmm. Very good. So in this case, it's going to be like this. And the uh, pronunciation is a sound is voiceless. ¿Verdad? Es como, es, no es sonoro. Así que vamos a terminarlo con T sound. Be ranked. Ranked. Excellent. Good job. And then we're moving to the next one. What about number three? Number three, volunteer for number three. Volunteer for number three. Me. Go ahead, Dina. Okay. The top choices are contacted to see if they can appear on the show. Mm -hmm. Very good. Are contacted. Now, in this case, the verb ends in T. So that means that we're going to add an extra syllable. Contacted. I see. Very good. Number four. Number four. Volunteer for number four. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Claudia Marcela. If some of them are an available the next people on the list are invited to appear instead mm -hmm. are invited very good the same right invite invited good job okay if they are unavailable eh, the next people on the list are invited to appear instead excellent now let's go ahead and send our answers and we got them all correct. Okay, good job on this one, guys. You were able to identify, you know, the type of, um, uh, I would say, feeling, right, we want to transmit, okay? Mm -hmm. And then also good job with the passive voice. That was in the third section, right? And then we have the last one, join the sentences, right? So here, it's the one that we did. Esta la hicimos acá. ¿verdad? And it says join the sentences with who or that, right? Make any changes where needed, okay? So this was the first one. I'm going to take it out of here and I'm going to use my wiper, okay? So we have a gaffer, comma, right? Who works on the movie or TV crew has to carry out the lighting design, right? So here we're putting together this sentence, okay? Now, what happened here? Remember that we were studying clauses, right? So whenever we have important information, right? A, that's gonna be a defined relative clause, right? And I'm going to open here the info so you can take a look. Give me a second. It's here. Give me a moment. Yeah, I think we have, that was one of the first topics that we studied and I'm going to look for it in the manual because actually we have it here. And that was about relative, defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? So let me just keep looking for it. Defining and non-defining relative clauses, given recommendations, that was the previous topic. Um, Give me a moment, guys. Why am I? I guess, sorry, I was having a hard time looking, I mean, finding the page number, okay? So we were saying that whenever we talk about defining 
and non-definite relative clauses, right? Um, there will be certain information that needs to be in between commas and some that, you know, you can leave it outside. So the final relative clauses are used to identify people, right? So it's like, it, as the word says, it's like given a definition, right? The final relative clauses. So a dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors under accents, right? So a dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. So when I have a definer relative close, I do not need to um, include extra information, right? So everything that I'm saying about the person or thing, it's important and it's defining, you know, um, uh, what that person, that thing, that feeling is. Now with the non-definer relative closes, it's different because we get further information about people, meaning that we're giving extra information. So whenever that happens, like in the example, a location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world, right? A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. So here, guys, pretty much what we, what we leave in between commas is that extra information. But the main idea, the main thing, the main message, it's, you know, what we have outside, okay? So over here in the examples, well, in the exercises, right? We have a gaffer has to carry out the light in the side. He or she works on a movie or TV crew, right? So here we have two things. Tenemos dos cosas. Una que es importante y otra que es extra. So what is extra? that the person works, you know, uh, on a movie or TV crew. Pero que hacen si la persona? Well, a gaffer has to carry out the light in the side. That's the main thing, okay? Then what about the second one, right? So we have here this one. Okay, over here, dialogue director, I mean, editors are sound technicians. They specialize in editing film scripts. Right, so same same thing here, okay? We have two things, one is important, the other one is extra, right? And it says dialogue, I mean, dialogue editors are sound technicians who specialize in editing film script. Oh, but no, I was, I was wrong, right? Actually, everything is important. Now, dialogue editors are sound technicians who specialized in editing films. Now here, why don't, why, don't we have extra info? Because both characteristics are defining what the dialogue editors do or are. That's the reason why, okay? Then we have number three. A property master is responsible for buying props. They are handled by actors. Guys, do you know what props mean? ¿Qué son los props? ¿Alguien buscó esa palabra? Do you know what it is? Anuncios. Anuncios. Mm, no, I think it's something different. Como comerciales. Uh, commercials. No, I think it's something different. Because mm -hmm. actually, anuncios y comerciales. Accesorios. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Uh, the, the, the prompts are like the things they use, the, uh, the accessories, right? Son todos como um, todo lo que utilizan eh, que, que tiene otro nombre. Um, ay, what's the name in Spanish? Utilería. Hey, thank you. That's the word, okay? Utilería, right? So whenever they are using props, okay? Exactly, utilería. So um, that, that's what props is, you know. Entonces tenemos aquí, a property master is responsible for buying props. They are handled by the actors. Now here, guys, if you see all the information that we have in this, in, in the um, in sentences, the two sentences are defining, you know, what the person does, the, the function, right? So a property master is responsible for buying props, that are handled by the actors, okay? And then we have this one. 
critics write films reviews, film reviews, they sometimes see more than 10 new movies a week. How cool, right? <laughs> critics write films, right? Film review, I'm film reviews, I'm sorry. They sometimes see more than 10 movies a week. Okay. Now here the sentence will be like this because there is extra info okay so critics who sometimes see more than 10 movies a week write film reviews so here the main idea is this one critics write film reviews so what i'm adding as extra uh, ah yeah lady come on up obviously i can do it Okay. And then the last one, right? Executive producers aren't involved in shooting a film. They are responsible for the budget, right? Okay, so let's see how it is because we have extra info, okay? So the extra info is who are responsible for the budget, right? Because actually that's not the main idea. The main idea is that executive producers aren't involved in shooting a film. Okay, so that's, you know, um, the last part of the exam, right? And I'm going to share it in here through the chat for the ones that um, that haven't completed. Solo una cosita, cuando sea así, que no se los toma, siempre es o por un espacio doble, o por una apóstrofe, o por una coma, o un espacio después de la, perdón, este, eh, un espacio en cada parte de antes y después de la coma, porque usó una mayúscula donde no tenía que usarla, agregó un punto donde no tenía que agregarlo, muy probablemente sea por eso. Y si usted lo ha estado haciendo así como le, lo ha estado haciendo, lo estamos haciendo juntos, mejor dicho, no va a tener problemas a menos que eh, la plataforma detecte un espacio de más. Generalmente son los espacios, porque no no hemos estado ocupando, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Apóstrofes. Si usted quiere, también lo que puede hacer cuando le toque hacer ejercicios como este, que usted agarra, copia, se lo trae para un, un blog de notas y aquí la trabaja. Executive producers are involved in shooting a film. They are responsible for the budget. Entonces, Yo la trabajo ya que la copié y la pegué. Executive producers. Acá vamos a poner una coma. Who are. Me traigo todo esto. Que es lo que voy a quitar de aquí. Porque ya no lo necesito ahí. Me paso para acá. Quito esto. Who are. Responsible. For the budget. Comma. Aren't involved in shooting a film. Y ahí ya la tengo. ¿Verdad? Utilizando siempre lo que yo he copiado para no estar como haciéndolo de cero. Si no, pues puede pasar que me equivoqué en algo y eso me va a afectar a mí ya al momento de, de mandar mi respuesta, ¿verdad? Ok, so do you have questions so far, guys? Questions? Preguntas? No? Regrets? Remorse? No? Okay, very good. Bye. So that, um, I'm going to probably go back to one of the topics here. Bueno, al menos que hay alguna pregunta. Do you have questions, guys? And that's it. Yes, es el examen. That's the final exam. Voy a traer para acá esto. In your manual on page number 98, Right, there was a situation here, and uh, previous to that, I think it was over here. Here we studied the defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? But down there, oh, do you read about Bollywood? Uh, I hope you did, right? I remember when I was studying English, the first time I read about Bollywood, I was amazed because actually I didn't know that there was an industry similar to Hollywood. But Bollywood, it's from India, right? So they have their own industry where they um, shoot and make movies, etc. And actually, their 
movies mostly are musicals, right? They have a lot of musicals and they it's located in Mumbai, right? So it's Bollywood comes from the words Bombay and Hollywood, right? So I hope you had the chance to read that article too, because actually it's interesting. Now here, guys, um, it says uh, react to these situations first, give an opinion or advice using a past model, then add another statement using the reaction in parentheses, right? So number one, it says John was driving too fast and the police stopped him. So this is, how would we give a warning to this person, guys? ¿Cómo le darían ustedes un consejo, pero una advertencia a la vez? How would you do that? What would you tell John? ¿Qué le dirían a John? I'm going to delete all this. What would you tell John? Uh -huh. En el ejercicio, en el examen, les aparecía este, miren. Let me see. Uh, I think it was, no. Acá. Si ustedes se fijan, aparecía. If you do it again, you lose your job. Okay. Esta era una warning, right? You can use it like that. La podemos usar así. O también tenemos acá el ejemplo. John shouldn't have driven so fast. He'd better be careful. Más le vale. Este he'd better, yo así lo, 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 lo interpreto en español, ¿verdad? Más le vale. He'd better be careful or he will be fine. Teacher, fine? ¿Va a estar bien? No. ¿Verdad? When, when, usted, when you are fined, that means that you're given a fine or a ticket. ¿Verdad? Es una esquela en, o tickets, ¿verdad? Entonces, I will, I will share with you that phrase. Give me a second. Oops. Vamos a buscarla aquí. I think it's to get a fine. Oh. O ticket también se puede. Okay. I think it's a fine. All here crash, dice Marta Rose. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. He better he better be careful or he'll crash. Muy bien. Entonces, fine es, es este un, una como esquela, un ticket. Y se dice to get fine. I get a fine or I'll get a fine, right? If you look for it into lingui, una multa. Uh -huh. Eso es una fine, una multa. Un ticket sí sería más como una esquela, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Very good. So th those are, you know, some of the uh, things that we studied, right? Also criticism, right? Lisa got an F on her English test. A criticism, it's generally very rude, right? But we, we don't have to be like that. How would a criticism, I mean, how would a critic would sound like? For Lisa, probably if we if we tell Lisa, Lisa, I told you you didn't study. I told you you had to study. That's why you failed the test. Now that's very rude. He'll get a ticket too, teacher. Uh -huh, yeah, come on. This is um, in that in that situation, right? Whenever we uh, offer that criticism to the person, right? We do it like that. We are very tough. We're very rude, but. Try to avoid being that like that, okay? Bill went shopping and spent too much money. An excuse. Hmm. Um, would be something like, hey, um, don't worry. It's okay. Um, you will be given a bonus at the end of the month. So you will be able to recover from that, right? Crystal is late to class every morning. A suggestion. How? What would you tell to Crystal? ¿Qué le dirían ustedes a Crystal, guys? She's late every morning. What would you suggest? Usando should. Any suggestion? Dígame, Liu. You should get up earlier. 
<laughs> you should get up earlier, right? Very good. That's the one that came to my mind as well. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? No? Okay. So I'm going to end here, you know, because I, I don't have much time. Well, I don't have more time actually, right? So I'm going to close here and let's move on to the attendance. Let's see, Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Here. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present teacher. Thank you. Aquí está. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Here. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Eliu, no. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Here. Thank you. Jenny Lisette Campos Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. No, espérenme. María Susena, ya la de flores. Dios mío. Present. Thank you, María. Ya les estoy cambiando, poniendo el mismo nombre. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Marta Ruth Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. Present. Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you. Jensi Marlene León López. Present teacher. Thank you. And Zulma Beatriz Pérez Gardamos. I'm here. Thank you so much. Jovito. José Jovito, presente. Ay, perdón. Fíjense que hay una parte en la que creo que yo se me, me pierdo, como ya veía que es uso lente, ¿verdad? Y siempre por ahí mismo me, me pierdo. Ahorita le agrego. Okay. Ya, yeah. thank you. Ahorita ya le agregué. José Jovito Torres Amaya. Ahí está. So, guys, thank you very much for getting this far with me. Remember that you need to wait uh, for the instructions on the new um, module, right? Congratulations. Um, just for the next module, my recommendation is always ask as many questions as you can. Always clarify your doubts. Never, never stop learning. And whenever you know you have questions, remember that you can Google it. You can ask the question to Google and you might get the answer that you're looking for. So thank you very much for joining me. And well, I wish you the best. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Rebeca, no se preocupe. Mm -hmm. Ahorita le agrego. Okay. Y también Diego. Thank you so much. Have a good night, guys, and nice meeting you. Good bye night. bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 bye.